All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, May 16th, 2019. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, planning board members present tonight. We have alternate Noah Cobb. We have regular member Sean Winston. We also have Mal Shore, the vice chair. We have um, regular member Paul Bovere and alternate Mike LaRue. Nicole Fecto is absent tonight. So, Mike, I think that you're up for being a voting member. All right. Um, this uh, moving on to the public comment session. Public comment session is open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come up to the podium, just state your name and address. You could speak about anything that relates to the planning board. We do have two public hearings tonight for that uh, subdivision out on Old Sanford Road, also the um, medical mar marijuana storefront on Portland Street. So those will be public hearings. So, But public comment sessions open. Please feel free to come forward to the podium. Hello. Um, Louisa Sheldon from 65 Sullivan Street. I wanted to come, come down and confirm um, whether or not the chairman received um, email documents which I'd asked to be forwarded to you. They were emailed to the town and the town manager on May the 4th. It was a Saturday, contained pictures um, in relation to the application that the Board of Selectmen had um, agreed to cease and desist using on May 2nd two days prior to that. Um, so that was addressed. I believe your email um, previously had been listed going to the planning department email. So I copied you on it. Um, I never got it. Okay. I, I'll give you my email address. Okay. Um, um, I never got it. Okay. Are you emailing planning at barrowmain.org? Yes. That goes to me. Okay. Um, in the subject of the email itself, I think I specifically asked that it be delivered to the chairman um, to be put forth with that application. Never got it. Okay. I'll give, I'll give you my email address. Okay. Do you have a pen? You want to write it down now? You want to do it in public? Or? Yeah, I don't care. Okay. It should be public anyway. Uh, I don't have a pen, actually. May I approach? Sure, absolutely. Hold on, on that side. <laughs> Just a couple other things. Um, I'll forward those to you um, just to let you know. The town, I'm going to ask you not to, uh, to continue that application for at least a week or two more. It's been going on for two years, hasn't been resolved. I need to meet with my lawyer. I can't do it for possibly until the week after Memorial Day. So if anything, I, I would like the board to keep that application in process and not make any decisions on it. Um, during this time span while we gather more information um, for you. It's not on the agenda this week it, and we have yes. our next meetings in three weeks. Three weeks, okay, so that's probably so we ample the town time. specific instruction on what we wanted before the application came back. Right, and they also made specific statements that weren't um, acknowledged and I came down here a couple of nights ago to the selectmen meeting and was told by the town manager that nothing has been done. They're pursuing some avenues that they're stating um, but nothing has been done. There has no cease, no control. Um, so I want that recognized in a public forum because apparently email communications don't get through at times. And um, we really need to meet with our lawyer in the meantime. And also, I guess I will send an email to you. We need to see the complete property record on 71 Sullivan Street, if you can go back a while. Okay, and just a couple other things. Yeah, just that um, town manager Aldridge said two days ago, absolutely nothing is done. And I'll show you documentation of why. Right, so, and also, if possible, that um, we, as soon as the meeting is agreed upon, 
to continue that public hearing or anything to do with this planning application or this application that was put forth to you, we need to be here every time. We can't get short notice on it, so I'm asking <coughs> if possible, can you control that? It'll, it'll, be, it'll be on me, and I, it's, you'll have my word that the okay. next time I get put on the agenda, I'll send you an email. Now you have my email address, I'll have yours, so I'll, I'll let okay. you know. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Mr. Chen. Dan Pinson, building inspector for the town of Berwick. In reference to the parking situation at the baseball field, I can tell you that the uh, town manager and I have been in conversation about trying to resolve that problem. So it's not gone undetected. We're aware of it and we're working on it. Thank you. What are you doing exactly? Because there's. Well, there's more than one problem there. We're trying to keep everybody uh, able to play baseball, able to park, and uh, keep the neighbors in a sense of well-being <coughs> it's not an easy thing just to so at, at the con during our last meeting the chairman of the select board said that he agreed with the consensus of the board that the town would cease use of that as a parking lot and then afterwards after the meeting he told me that they're going to continue to use it up to 22 cars i got a message from james that the town's going to continue to use it up to 22 cars which is what the original permit said in the past few weekends, there's been way more than 22 cars there. Way more. There's zero enforcement about how many cars are going in there. I can understand her frustrations. Certainly. Because it just seems like the town is just saying, you know what, we're just going to continue to do, to do, continue to do what we're, what we're going to do without coming forward and fixing the problem. Okay. Okay. I'll, st I'll say it once again on record, the town needs to stop using that property until this is fixed. Otherwise, if they want to go to court, then that's something that they're going to have to go down the road. I I would add to that that my kids both played baseball. That parking lot, that space was not available. So there's no reason why it can't be closed off until this gets resolved because the baseball league survived for years without that. Mm -hmm. I think they can go on again without it. I understand. I mean, it, it's tough parking if you get down to the other parking lot late, but, you know, get there early. And we have discussed the... Uh nature of the problems there and maybe uh, an enforcement officer of some type either is provided by the uh, baseball league or a volunteer to maintain uh, some parking in there especially for those people that have uh, need assistance in walking who enjoy watching the game or other disabilities that prevents them from parking in a further parking lot but we've been discussing all of those issues i can assure you if this was any other property owner that came to the town it was operating outside of, <coughs> outside of use, we would have sent you over there to shut them down with a cease order. Uh, right? Well, uh, s certainly there's conversation before a cease and desist order is issued. There's a policy that we follow through that if someone has an issue, we talk with them. We send them up to three letters for compliance. So generally it could be 90 days before we get compliance out of a situation. Dan, the day after our meeting here, the town posted on the website a notice relative to that parking telling people to be more considerate and more important that it was limited to 22 cars. But you're not telling me no enforcement effort at all has been done. So, that, so a, a notice was posted on the website and totally ignored by everybody including the town itself. It's pretty much where we are right now? I, don't, I wouldn't say it was ignored. We're talking about it, and we're looking for a way to fix it to well, satisfy I, everybody. I'm hearing at least from, some, from the woman who lives next door that the 22-car limit was ignored, and, there's, and you seem to be agreeing that the 22-car limit has been ignored and there was no enforcement. Correct. Can you tell me why? I cannot. We haven't reached a decision to have but, everybody. But if, if you put up a note, not you personally, if yep. the town puts up a notice yep. that says we will limit to 22 cars. How is it that there's no enforcement effort to make sure it's limited to 22 cars? The, uh, we're making a sign. We're doing signage for the entrance into that parking area. But you, you put the notice on the website two weeks ago, or somebody put the notice on the website two weeks ago. Correct. But it, it takes two weeks to write a sign? Well, it was decided on what type of sign we were going to be putting up there. Uh, How about a sign that said the same thing you put on the website? Um, I was working on that today. 
the sign. Yeah. But it, but it was put on the website two weeks ago. Right? I read it the next day. Please. Yeah. And so it was a very nice, that could have been turned so into a sign. So I wrote, I wrote that Friday just to try to, you know, you're just trying to improve it for, for Ms. Ms. Sheldon's property. You know, that's, that's the goal. So we'll have a sign out there um, tomorrow unless something drastic happens and I get busy or forget or something. But things, it's pretty chaotic from, from time to time, no excuses. But I can have, I can, I, I have a document uh, right now that's up that says 22 cars max. And, I, you know, we have the sign to put it on. I've talked about blocking off area in front of um Luis's house so at least if you block off those the area in front that's 10 spaces she mentioned I think something in the 80 the count of 80 cars over the over this weekend and I'm not sure 80 I'm I guess yeah, the 80 could fit but yeah, yeah our lot that we're projecting is maybe 50 lot 50 spots I would think that the cars are maybe at 30 maybe 40 max but I figure if we start you put up the sign and maybe put out put out the notice again and we start blocking off some of the areas try to get it down to but cool. you're not going to get people to drive in and count cars yeah. no they're not going to drive in and so say oh there's is, 20 there's 22 cars i gotta go park it somewhere else who's responsible for enforcing parking rules in town is that the police department i guess that's that's the crux that's the total crux of the problem is that it seems like everyone should be responsible so nobody's responsible well then why don't we just barricade the parking lot off and close it for now until it gets figured actually, out. this is a code issue, so yeah, I'm not throwing Dan under the bus, but this is a code issue, so it would actually be technically Dan's, Dan's responsibility. I'm not saying that I want Dan to come out here on Saturday and Sunday, but I'm just saying it's not the police. The police department can't go out there and write a ticket on code Pri enforcement. Private property. It's private property. You could say it's code. You could say the Bur uh, um, Berwick Baseball should do it. You could say that Public Works should put the signs up. You could say it's the rec department that should be responsible. Um, you could say code's responsible. So it's it's a quandary, and I agree that we should be um, quick about addressing it. We need to get it down to 22 cars, and I guess if we can't if we can't do it, then... Well, right, you're not going to have, have anybody cars. there to enforce the number of cars. Right. Like I said, people aren't going to self-enforce, you know, like I said, drive in and count the cars. Then you're going to continue to have this problem until something gets... And that's why I think if you if you of. strategically close off certain areas and you direct the parking lot area, that makes it so. It's just too much work. The simple solution is the town needs to come back in here with the with the plan like we asked for. It comes through, it goes to public hearing, it gets approved. We go out, we do a site walk. Then it, you know, then it gets approved, and then we can park as many as the 50 cars there or whatever, as long as everybody's happy. That's the simple solution. Not going out there and putting out cones and stuff. Town should not be using it. We're going town's going to get sued. It's plain and simple. It, it says no parking. You have to, I, yeah. Well, you're going to have to barricade it at this point because people aren't going to, they're going to look at that open lot, that open space, and they're not going to pay attention to one sign that says no parking. All right. I know we, we could spin our wheels here all night, James. I know it's not you. I know it's not Dan. We, there's there's got to be more that's got to be done about this. Yeah. I, I think we're, we're going to, I'm at least going to try with the sign and, and try to at least improve the situation. And if it's, I mean, if it's a complete loss, then at some, I think at a point we're going to close the lot off and that will happen in a timely manner. The, the point where the police get involved Thank is you. when you do blockade it at the street and then it's on, it's a no trespassing on private property, then the police can get involved. They have to. Yeah. yeah. Am I off the hook? Yes, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. All right, we're still in public comment session, so feel free to come forward here. We still have those two public hearings this evening, so if you have, have anything else that relates to the planning board, feel free to come forward. See nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the May 2nd, 2019 meeting. Oh, Paul's got a lot in there. You got a red ink over there? No, it's black ink. Or those might be his notes. Um, they, they are notes. And, um, but I would like to add a few things. For example, under old business on the second page, uh, the minutes should reflect we did have a site visit at 5.30 p.m. at 398 School Street. And the minutes don't reflect that. And I know that... Um, well, the, the beginning of the second paragraph says, Nicole Fecto said the site walk was good. 
suggesting that block Niles. Well, it's right under the part that says no, no, I see, I see that. But what I'm saying is we're, we're lacking. These are little isolated the three words here that relate to something else that did happen. It could have been and the I site did, walk in any other day. Can we just right. say that the site walk was All conducted on May second? A site walk at 5.30 p.m. on the site at 398 School Street. It's just well, adding you know, a few details that's... But you, you raise a more important point. We used to have notes on site walks. We don't anymore. That's right. So... But it can be reflected here. But do we want to go back to that process? Isn't that what our secretary did? That's what our secretary should do, so. The Nicole's not here tonight, so we can't instruct so her. That's so a, that's a perfectly good time to put that responsibility on her. Yes. <laughs> what, yeah, better, I mean, what better time? Yeah, All right. yeah. <laughs> you know, what I do is I, I read this and try to put myself forward in time, and I'm reading back to see what happened that night, and it's not here. That's my well, point. Well, I, I agree with you, but, I, you know, I would rather have full notes of a site walk. Because as I remember, a fair amount happened at the site walk itself. Yes. Yep. And a few words will not reflect all of the issues that were raised. And that is a public meeting, and, and there's public notice of it. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the next time we should talk with our secretary about. All right, we could do that. That's all procedural. I'd just stuff, like to so. see a few more descriptive um, adjectives and comments in the minutes so that when you read them, they just read like. Uh, like I remember it happening, you know. All right, what else do you have? Um, I, I'll leave it at that one right now, and I think the others are just because um, I'm grumpy. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're, we've been put on notice. Okay. Do you have anything? Yeah, speaking of grumpy. Um, I got two grumpy men next to You got to two me. grumpy men, <laughs> and you're in between both of us. I know. <laughs> and, and the worst part, we're old and grumpy. And, oh, that's the worst kind of grumpy. Um, but for the record, as the, as the minutes show, the chair of the board, of the select board, ag initially agreed that it should be shut down. When pressed upon it, he said that wasn't his decision alone to make. That was two weeks ago. Has the select board done anything? with regard to the chair's agreement that it ought to be shut down? No. No. no so the, qu the question is, if he agreed that it wasn't his decision alone, why wasn't it brought to the full select board for their vote? I is there some way we can ask the, the select board to act I on this? I mean, I it's believe right it's here in the minutes. The town manager said that he, that night that he would uh, Call the other members of the psych board and poll them as to what they wanted to do. I will take care of this. To, I will take care of this with an email to <coughs> to Steve and to and to Tom Wright. Okay, all right. Let's just talk about the minutes. That was in the minutes. Well, you're right. Anything else? That's what made me grumpy. It was right there in front of my face, and so, they still couldn't get it right. So we have an amendment to the minutes. So the motion will be for the approval of the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. Motion. I'll second. And a second. Further discussion. All in favor? Abstain? Yeah, I'm okay. Saying. So that's four two one with uh, four zero one. Okay. Next on the agenda is a public hearing for major subdivision Old Sanford Road map R forty one, a lot sixteen. It's in the aquifer protection zone. The applicant is Curtis. This is a public hearing to talk about this application only. Um, all the abutters were notified with public hearing was noticed in the paper as well. So feel free to come forward and talk about just this application only. And we're going to be moving on. In old business, we'll discuss the rest of the application. But feel free to come forward if you have any questions or comments. Going once, going twice. Right. Say so nobody come forward. We close the public hearing on the Old Sanford Road subdivision. Next is a public hearing conditional use application, medical marijuana storefront, storefront 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12 1. That's in the RCI zone. The applicant is Paper Birch LLC. Public hearing is open on this application. Mr. Chairman, I'm Jeff Oliva with Civil Consultants. Would you like me to make a narrative, or do you want to just hit public comments first? Let's do public comments okay. first, because I think that we have a couple questions. 
that I think that we could take those questions down and then you can answer them then afterwards. And if you could just state your name and address for the record. Yep. Ryan Rice, 38 Hoopa Sands Road, South Berwick. I own uh, the two properties abutting this um, proposal. Uh, one of them is a shared driveway to one of my pieces of property. When the property was originally sold, there was to be no retail marijuana sales on that property. Um, I sort of got shorthanded here. I don't have all my paperwork. Um, with the traffic count, the roadway is a shared roadway. Um, I have to pay 50% of the maintenance to that roadway once and if it is installed. And with the extra traffic and stuff, I would really like some extra time to uh, pursue this a little bit more and do a little bit more research. I'm sorry I'm sort of caught here, you know, unexpected, but um, where it is a shared driveway, um, I just, I really have a problem with what I was told when the property was sold um, that wouldn't happen, this happening. What were you told when the property was sold? When I was told it would be strictly a growing facility, there would be absolutely no retail sales on the property. And now they're here for a change in use. But the deed's not restricted to it. Uh, I, I'm going to have to pull out the sales agreement and everything else. I didn't have time tonight. I'm sorry. Who told you uh, this? Uh, the lawyer for Paper Birch. I said, I don't have all my paperwork, but I just... I. I really appreciate it. If there's any way we could not make a decision tonight, were you so noticed I can do on some this, research. Uh, when were you noticed on this application? Excuse me? When did you receive notice to this application? I, I just found out about it about three hours ago, to be honest with you. You didn't get anything in the mail? I did get something in the mail, and that's my own negligence that I didn't pursue it. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to say that, that I'm right or wrong or whatever, but I'm just asking for a little bit of time for me to pursue this a little bit more. So What's your issue, that there's a, a retail facility going in, or you're just worried about the shared driveway cost? Shared driveway, the traffic, the traffic count. Okay. Um, this is a, uh, not a heavy commercial, it's a light commercial um, access to the state. I had this put in. Um, I'm not sure what the count is. Like I said, I don't have all my facts and figures. I mean, if you guys make a decision, I respect your decision. But I'd just like a little bit of time for me to do a little bit of research. And possibly Jeff can answer my questions and we can iron something out. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Can, can I ask one question before yes. you, uh, you're off the podium? Uh, do you have a document that, uh, that defines the shared easement on that driveway that's written up for the, because there's two lots that are shared by that common entrance? Correct. I own one in, in paper written, um Yes, it, it, it is in my contract. It's in the contract for the purchase of the property okay. that they will install the road to town specs yeah. to my well, excuse me to my property and you know to their property. It is in the deed. I'm sure Jeff has it. If not, I can I can produce that for you. Yeah, can, the driveway hasn't been put in yet. Yeah. Um, can can the town like can the planning office uh, be provided a copy of that document? Sure, Thank sure. You. And Jeff probably has it. Any other questions? No. Nope. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. This is a public hearing for conditional use application medical marijuana storefront on Portland Street. This application alone. Feel free to come forward to the podium. And Jeff, we can we can address that in in old business. All right. Seeing nobody come forward, close the public hearing on the conditional use application for 357 Portland Street. Old Business, Major Subdivision, Old Sanford Road, Map R41, Lot 16, Aquifier Protection Zone, Applicant Curtis. Uh, Dustin Morrill, Line Pro Lance Van. Nick Curtis, 206 Old Sanford Road. Um, so, yeah, we've met two weeks ago and we did the public hearing tonight <clears throat> you guys asked for one change to say major on the plan not minor I did that um, I think we're hopefully good with everything else um, 
Lee Jay, you got anything? Uh, I know the applicant had addressed all of the previous issues other than that one um, at the previous meeting, and I believe you should have some draft findings of fact in front of you this mm -hmm. evening for your consideration. Do you have anything? Uh, findings of fact, I do have a few things. Um, but in, one of them actually is similar to what we just spoke about in the prior application, and that is because there are, I believe, three lots that are going to be using, at least two, could be three, that will be using that shared drive. And usually when you have an arrangement like that, the planning board's always asked for the document that defines uh, what the rules are for that. It's, it's almost like a condo arrangement, if you want to call it. Yeah. And I think they're pretty boilerplate documents. Yeah, we have some. I just didn't. Yeah. So that should be supplied because in the future, if there is an issue there, yeah. then the town may have to get involved and that document is needed. Yeah, that will be part of the deeds. Um, are we going to look at the findings of fact and go right through them? Sure, you want to. We've got some stuff, yeah. What do you got? Oh, yeah, we got a misspelling right there. Yeah. Curtis Land Development, Development. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. And, and like I said, I was grumpy. So in reading this, I would like to have a date on these documents. It's frustrating when you have like three documents for the same project mm -hmm. and you got to figure out which one came first. The top, on the, on There's the nothing on this one. Some of the others do have them. Yeah. Um, so a date I think is important for it, especially finding the fact that it used as a basis for conditional use. Is the signing page dated? Or the um, no, it's not dated. Or he will date it. Yeah, I'll date it. <coughs> it. says the applicant indicated the road would remain private. The applicant will revise the plan for the May 2nd meeting. It's actually the May uh, 16th, 16th meeting. Yeah. Right. So so that's, that's another change. On the site plan, do you have that there's going to be a, uh, a rain, um, almost like a homeowner's arrangement for that road? Does it say there on the site plan in the notes? Yeah, right here in the, the uh, conditions of approval. Is that? Okay. Some of the uh, some of the other items on the findings of fact, for example, traffic conditions, and I know that there's not a lot of traffic on the back Sanford Road, but um, I think we've talked about this in the past that it says here the traffic not applicable. Um, I'm not sure if that's not applicable. It, there should be something that says uh, there's not a lot of traffic on the back Sanford Road and therefore it's not applicable. I mean, you're going to scratch your head and you can why isn't traffic applicable? Um, and the same goes for sewage disposal. Um, there's no um, sentence at the end of that criteria for conditional use that says not, apl not applicable or whatever. It's just left open. And I can find others in the uh, findings of fact. But um, just makes that you go down through and you expect some kind of a, uh, a process in reading this, and there's just things that are missing. Um, Another one is solid waste. The proposed subdivision will not cost an unreasonable burden on the municipal, municipality's ability to dispose of solid waste. And then the answer is uh, the applicant is only subdividing the land at this time. No development is proposed. You know, the development is implied. It, it is proposed. Um, so I read that and I'm saying, what do you mean no development is proposed? It's a five-lot subdivision. Um, so the reason I make that statement is because at this time there's no no building permits proposed. Yeah. There's nothing proposed for that site. Could be ten years before anything. It, it could be. It could be. Yeah. But when you have if, a if it's a site plan and you're building a commercial building, you've got a different situation than subdividing a piece of land that may never get built on. They may they may sell the lots before they even build anything on them. For sure, yeah. 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 So. What's the name of the road? Uh, Alley's Way. So you know, technically, town roads aren't supposed to be named, have person names. So this isn't named after a person, is it? Nope. Okay. It's also a private way. It's not a town mm. 
Is that Never know. Old? You can't name a town no. named after a person? No yeah. street name shall be given the, given the name of a person. So alley's just like an alley. It's just, a it's just alley. an alley. It's like a Berwick alley. Just, just like an avenue. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and the other one I had was um, on the 11-8 um, impact on natural beauty, aesthetics, historic sites, wildlife habitat. Um, in the past, we've kind of required something from the Inland Fisheries uh, Department saying that there was no deer habitat there uh, to be concerned. I know it's only a few lots, um, but it's not applicable again. And usually we require a letter saying, no, there is no deer ha habitat in that area. What that triggers that? Considered. What triggers that is usually a project that would go to DEP. Anything small in that, and you're not going to get IFW to respond to. Anything that you have to get a DEP, so a big subdivision like, uh, you know, 60 lots. Correct. 20 lots actually triggers DEP, but yes. We, we have overlay maps that I, I could look at for these types of projects and make a note saying, you know, it's not an overlay that shows the habitats. I, it shows I looked at it too and I didn't see anything. Yeah. That, it would be great that if it didn't say not applicable, it would say that at least we covered yeah. it. And, and we've been applicable. through this before and, and I thought we had agreed that instead of saying not applicable, we would say in compliance. Yes. I don't recall that, but I can certainly change But some of us grumpy old people do. I will redo these findings. We're a very testy yeah. bunch and, tonight and, and here. Very testy bunch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but in fact, whether or not we have raised it before, which we have, but whether or not we have, it should say in compliance. I mean, questions about traffic, you know, they're in compliance. There's not a problem rather than it's not applicable. And, and that's right. In compliance is a good set of words. Not applicable means it doesn't apply. It does apply. Well, our, it, it our job is to determine if something is in compliance or not. Yeah. And so. clearly questions about traffic, we ought to say whether or not they're in compliance. What else? Well, the floodplain, the floodplain management, um, I kind of felt that uh, there was a zone A floodplain shown on the plan. The lot layout suggests that no new development will occur within that area identified. I suppose that is fine. Because it is the plan, it is on the plan. And the common driveway document, which I just covered. Um, that should do it on that one. Did you get all that? I got all of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other changes? So, do we have, uh, we find, is these are findings of facts, do we have uh, conditions of approval? Um, the only condition of approval is on their plan, and it states road is to remain private and will have a maintenance agreement. That was the only condition that was proposed or put on them at the time that the project was originally submitted. All right, so at the last meeting, this uh, application was voted for completion, so uh, we have a couple or, or three uh, votes tonight. Vote on the findings of fact. Uh, we have a vote on the... Um, conditions of approval, and then a vote on the approval of the plan. Correct. Does everybody feel good going forward here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first motion will be for uh, the uh, voting on the, uh, approving the, uh, excuse me, voting on the findings of fact. So just for the record on that, I think it ought to be stated that they'll be amended yeah. right. and they will not be Correct. signed until you're right. happy with those. Yep. Voting's on the findings of fa vote on the findings of fact as amended. So moved. I'll second. And seconded by Sean. Further discussion. So, like Lee J said, once we get this the next meeting in three weeks, then we'll go through it and then we'll sign off on it. But tonight we're going to vote on this and approve it with all the amendments. So, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Okay. Um, and next would be voting on the conditions of approval, which is like what the town planner just said, was uh, was just that the road's going to remain private. Anybody? Paul. Paul. 
I'll make a motion that we approve so it, the yeah. uh, conditions of approval. And I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And finally, voting on the approval of the plan. I'll make a motion to vote on approving of the uh, site plan. Okay, so we have we have a motion to approve this plan for a major subdivision on Old Sanford Road. Second. Seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's 5 0. All right. Thank you. We're done. Thank yep. you. Like I tell everybody, Dustin knows, don't, you don't have to feel compelled to stay for the whole meeting unless you want to see some fireworks tonight. I'm here for the so. spring of one, so. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get a mylar to get signed? Yeah. Huh? You have to get a... Yeah. You have the mylar now? Yeah. Oh, okay. I actually have the right hands now. Okay. <laughs> we'll sign them at the end of the meeting, yeah. Yeah, or next okay. week. But next week yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, if you want to wait on those until yeah. the findings of fact are completed. Next is conditional use application, medical marijuana storefront, 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12-1, it's in the RCI zone, applicant is Paper Birch Property, LLC. Yes, Mr. Chairman, so um, the only issue that remained at the time, um, other than the um, abutter who spoke this evening, was your concern regarding um, um, buffering and security from the property and requested a letter from the um, police department on their opinion regarding that. I think we got that two weeks ago, didn't we? Sh yeah. should have received that yeah. and the applicant um, and the, the police chief indicated that they prefer not to have as much buffering as was before for security purposes um, and that should at least until this evening's public hearing piece take care of everything that the planning board had discussed previously. Okay. Did you write, jot those questions down I for sure, Mr. Rice? I sure did. You want to start off with yep, those? I do. Perfect. Um, there is a shared uh, driveway agreement between the two properties of where our driveway is coming off of here. Um, it's indicated on our plan. It's in the deed that is on file with the town as part of the application. Um, there is a purchases and sale agreement that indicated that um, the applicant was responsible to build the driveway in and, um, as part of this, um, but there was no indication in the purchase and sale that uh, there was a restriction on use um, for the property. That copy of the um, purchase and sale, I don't know if it was submitted with the first application, but has been while we've been sitting here, was emailed to James, so he has a copy of that now. Um, in his email that, that indicates that information. Um, the property has a DOT permit that was submitted with the um, application request. As this process has moved forward, DOT looks at traffic, DOT looks at the design. Um, the indication is that the design has to be across from, from the uh, pond road on that side. Um, again, the um, part of the purchase and sale is that the applicant builds and uh, maintains that. The idea is that um, that lot next door is vacant. Um, until that time is developed, then my applicant has to do the maintenance on the roadway and take care of it uh, until something happens on that side. And then there's an agreement about what happens outside of or inside that little bit of shared driveway area. Um, that, I think, addresses the uh, questions. Uh, we're mostly with traffic shared driveway and um, the restrictions on the deed. Uh, again, there, uh, from what the applicant is telling me, there's no restriction to use in the deed or in the purchase and sale. Can, can you tell us whether or not the attorney for your client made any uh, I will let my, uh, assertions? my client come up and address that question. Hi, Paul Penuti, Paper Birch Properties. Um, I honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know um, of any conversations that ever went to a part or so. I'm but not sure. you, you have an attorney, so it's yeah. possible a conversation could have happened? It's possible, sure, yeah. 
do you have the ability to find out if there was such an assertion made? Sure, absolutely. I do. The town does have a copy of the warranty deed, and there are no restrictions uh, in the warranty deed, nor are, are no there doubt. Any. And at this point, we're not talking about whether it has any sure. legal ramification. We just like to know. Yeah, I can call him. I mean, I can totally find that'd out. Be for good you. To, that'd be good. And then, if you can email the answer to James, so we'll have it for the record. That would be a good thing. Yeah, sure. No, easy enough. Mr. Chairman, I might be able to shed a little bit of light on that, um, as the applicant did say. Um, a copy of Exhibit A, um, which is the deed, does say that the portion of premises described here it outlined on the plan as proposed private 30-foot wide common driveway easement is subject to an easement for ingress and egress and the placement of utilities for the perpetual benefit of the owners of Lot 12-1 as described on the plan and their heirs and assigns forever. Um, that's all it says. The other piece is that in the submission information um, that Jeff provided under site design phase one, there is a statement that says and and um, that the site has previous the site has a previously approved DOT entrance permit for shared driveway use. Since the use of the property is being altered to retail, an updated entrance permit will be obtained from the DOT. The applicant has application has been submitted and will be provided to the town once approved by the DOT. No changes to the approved entry are proposed. Yep. And, and uh, Lee Jay, that is um, the first version. Since we came back from the, the submission to the application, um, I modified the narrative to indicate that we've obtained that. Okay. And that's been already sent out to, to, to I, I know, to you, to James, and, and part of the application. Could you give a copy of that to Mr. Rice? Yeah, absolutely. I don't have a copy with me, but I will. The, the I will DOT get you app, the, the, the DOT approval that nothing's yep. changed on that. Would that make you feel better? Uh, yeah, I thought of. I really feel that I'm sort of blindsided here. That's fine. Yeah, that would be. I appreciate it. Thank you very And there's no restrictions on the use in that deed. No. You've looked through the deed already. Yeah. On, on their original application. No, on the deed. On their original application, <coughs> I thought it was, there was going to be no retail. Right. Now, that, now that's why they're back here to change that use. They're, cha they're changing the use. Right. Yeah. That, that was not in the that's deed. What that was is. their application. Correct. Right. Just, that was Correct. just on the application. Correct. Because as, as, it, as it stands right now, they can't do retail, and that's why they're here. Yeah. yeah no, there's, there's nothing in the deed that says that. I have a question. Yeah. Um, once he puts in what he wants to on his property, and then the the driveway is really shared at that point, is there is it a straight up fifty percent is paid by either by both sides, or is it going to be something a little more scaled for use? Because I think yeah. one of his issues is that the drive is going to get a lot of use from the retail side, while it might not get much use from his side, sure. and he'll end up yeah. getting paying more. Yeah. I I typically how, how these work is that you're um, responsible for your portion of that <coughs> that shared property so um, any kind of maintenance that goes on over here to this access is not the responsibility of this lot owner um, if this driveway comes in and this washes out over here then it's this lot owner's responsibility um, so it would be an agreement that it's most likely just plowing and stuff on this side um, it's, it's very small um, area so I'm, they're, they're usually easily worked out by just a verbal agreement between the two um, but as indicated in the purchase and sale agreement is that the my applic uh, applicant has to go and build that build the road there's no cost of building the driveway in from from route 4 into there on uh, the the abutting property that gets the use of the shared driveway well, I think part of what Noah's question is is that when it does when it reaches a point someday when that is deteriorated, yeah. you know, the retail operation has had, say, 20 cars a day, and if there's just a residence on the other side, two trips a day yeah. in and out, yeah. so obviously one person is causing more damage to the road than the other. Yeah. And usually that, that would be spelled out somewhere in a, in a deed and agreement, but where there isn't, it's a shared, it's, where it isn't, it comes down to I'm going to call it a gentleman's agreement where the two neighbors work together. There's not a there's not an indication in zoning that 
that restricts that or, or puts conditions on that. Um, because it could be the opposite. It could be the fact that the lot is developed next door with a heavy use and it come, turns out that the, the traffic for the retail is, is less and lower than who, you know, that, that's how, where that kind of agreement between the two par properties but kind of independent out of this room together, work together. At this moment, do you have such a gentleman's agreement as to the situation I think that will initially I, happen? I, I don't know. Um, Paul, did you have something you wanted to come up? Paul Venuti, uh, Paper Birch. We l l don't have any problems maintaining the road and paying for it. I mean, we're going to put it in anyway, but in terms of maintaining it, it's a very small piece of the road. And I mean, literally, we'll, we'll you know, take that. I understand the concern. Uh, we, we, it probably, I mean, you know, the traffic generated would probably be, you know, leaning a little bit more towards on our side. So it's only fair. I mean, if that's the case, I mean, I, if you could put something like that into writing, I'm sure that would put him at ease greatly. Let's so just use it as a condition. Answer. Can we throw it as a sure a condition on there, and then uh, and I'll definitely take Mr. care Lee of it. Lee J, we can put that as a condition. I'm writing it down right now. Well, that's your heart. We'll find its way into the findings of fact. Yep. Um, can I ask a question you on the, uh, the old man very happy? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you've reapplied to the DOT for the change in use. Uh, you already have that, yep. And, and on that application, you have to specify or, or I think give your estimate on the traffic yep. versus the original application. That's right. What was what were the numbers on one versus oh. the other, do you know? I, I don't know off the top of my head, Paul, but um, what we do is, um, and I can get that, and that's all been part, it's all, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have it here with me. It's all been submitted to, to Lee J and to James. They have that in the files. Um, and uh, it includes the whole application that we gave to the mm -hmm. DOT for but that. But it wasn't a, a drastic uh, change from well, the Well, it, it actually, it, 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 was, it was more of a change that, when, that was there before because, remember, this was for, uh, for uh, um, an agricultural use and then this. So this is more. So we based this on what we had for areas out of the ITE um, traffic code that tells us what we need to use for um, traffic generation from a retail space. Well, I mean, that's what we they use have that. like 18 parking spaces and then like another 18 proposed in a second phase after that. So I'm assuming the traffic is going to be yeah. substantial. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And I think retail, I mean, it just makes sense that if you're coming into work in a building versus yeah. you get traffic that right. yeah. coming into buying. Coming and going. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's all, and that's all part of that's all. I mean, that was all in that. And I can, um, I, I, know the, I know it's already here on the town side, but I can make sure you get it in our Did that answer your questions? Yeah, it, it sort of answers my question, but I, I, I guess I just, I, I'm, I'm not a developer or anything, but when something's being completely redesigned that's affecting the property that I own as far as an entrance, didn't I even notify? You said that you were, you, notified. You were notified. We've been I, working I on this for two I months. I notified about no entrance change. I just been notified. Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't. Did you, right check your, but did you check you your mail? You were notified several weeks ago, correct, James? Yeah. That, and and you agreed. I mean, it was out of the words yeah, out of yeah. your mouth. No, no, no. You I, you I, chose I, to ignore I, it. And I'm sorry, no, and I, I wish you ignore, hadn't. I didn't ignore it. But we can only do what we can do. We followed the law. We gave you notice. If you didn't guess, respond to it, you know, I'm sorry, but no, I mean, I think I, you, I, you're getting I, a fair I, hearing now on your concerns. Yeah. No, and I appreciate it. No, what I. I'm all set. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and just, and also to, to, to let Dwayne know is that when we designed that driveway coming in, we did, I, when I designed it, made provisions to make sure that there was an easy way for him to connect to that in the future off of the end of that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Further discussions for the applicant? I mean, this is, we're out of order, but go, go ahead. When you no, when we, also, uh, we just got a notification from Berwick TV that they can't hear anyone in the audience. So we're going to have to step up to the podium. Here. If you could come, yes. And just state your name. Hi, Cheryl Dion um, for Coffin Lane. Jeff, when you reapplied to the main DOT and you asked for an increase in change of use, did you also think about what the use would be? whether it's commercial on the other parcel? Well, I'd let them know that, they're, that they're, they know what the zone, I'll, I'll address the question. They know what the zone is in that area. Um, they think about a Andy Fontaine, 
I mean, Tony Fontaine uh, thinks about it, but when they write it up, they write it up as a residential unit. That's how, that's how they do it. They don't indicate because there's nothing proposed for that. They indicate that it's going to be a commercial unit with X amount of traffic in, in one residential unit. So that when that gets developed, potentially that goes back to, to, to the DOT for review again. That, that's just okay. how the DOT operates right. for that. But they also think about what's going to happen. They're not going to grant, they're not going to grant something that's going to maximize just for one lot and then realize that when this comes forward, they can't do anything on it, knowing that they have one driveway and it's, and it's deeded as a shared driveway. It's not going to handcuff the job. It should not, no. Do we have any other questions? Thank you very much. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, so at the last meeting, we approved this application as being, we found this application complete. Now tonight, we're going to vote, we have three votes that we can take here. Approval of the findings of facts, approval of the conditions, and then approval of the application. So uh, do we have anything on the findings of fact? Findings of fact are going to be upgraded, remember, I'm going to include in the traffic piece that Paul Venuti stated that he would be responsible for any future maintenance and upgrade of the driveway entrance. What is the condition to you? Uh, if you want to put it as a condition of approval, please do so. And then I will update the plan with that conditional note prior to you folks signing it, at, if it's approved at the next meeting. Anything on the findings of fact? No, that these were good. Yeah, if we see nothing there, the motion will be for approval of the findings of fact. And I'll make the motion that we approve the findings of fact for the, uh, I guess it's called the uh, Paper Birch property or Kind Farms Reserve. I'll second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, moving on to the approval of the, con uh, our conditions of approval. So the conditions of approval are any modification to the condition of lease plans and application as approved prior to be being, being made must also be re reviewed and approved by the planning board. The applicant shall ensure that all lighting installed on the building is dark sky compliant with cutoff fixtures to prevent light trespass on neighbors or neighboring properties on the street. Three, per section 9.8.8.2, H.2, conditional use approval for the use stated in this decision shall expire in one year if that use is not commenced. And four, this conditional use shall inure to the benefit of the applicant and bind its successors and assigns and shall be deemed to run with the land. And number five, that can other condition would be that you would work out that agreement. Yes, Paul, and yes, I will. Okay. Regarding future maintenance. Yep. Well, it's nothing to work out. They've already worked it out. I mean, the applicant has said... Yes, but I've got to add it to your findings of fact. Right, but the, the condition is, is not that they work out an agreement. The condition Correct. is he agreed Correct. that he uh, will No, do absolutely. It. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going on the findings of fact, and, yes. it's gonna, and you're going to put it on the plan, Jeff? Yes, sir. Okay. I will uh, make a motion that we approve the conditions of approval for Paper Birch property. I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. Now moving on to the approval of the application. Somebody like to make a motion to approve the application? I make a motion to approve the application. I'll second. And seconded. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. So we'll have the Mylars. The updated Mylars then, yep. and then we'll next sign meeting. off yep. at next meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Next on the agenda is conditional use application medical marijuana production facility, 398 School Street. Our three zone with frontage on Route 9 applicant is David Springer. So we'll start off with the town planner. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening um, again. Um, on this application, there are two um, issues 
that um, need to be discussed tonight. I honestly cannot recall if I provided you a supplemental memo on that or not. But no. Um, so the two items are that there's been communication since the site visit um, and the board meeting from the last meeting. There was discussion about placing um, landscaping behind building number five. Um, where the abutters are located and since that time um, Mr. Springer has asked if he could put a six foot high stockade fence in that area um, I'm fine with that except that and I'll show you on this um, I think it needs to also wrap around the property um, not just be in the rear as it's shown on the plan but come around the property to help screen the Pepin Family Limited Partnership parcel um, the other thing that is on the plan, as you recall, uh, I guess during a walk, um, which I did not take, but you folks took, behind building number two, there was a building that was originally not put on the plan. Um, that has since been revised and updated, and that building is neither inside the setback envelope for the property um, or completely on this property. And so a proposed condition of approval um, would be that no um, CO would be um, given to the applicant until the building is removed or no final approval um, until the building is removed. Those would be your two options and I understand that, that Mr. Springer has indicated that that building would be removed. So He's actually buying that land? The, the rest of the land all the way over to the other road. Um, he sent an agreement with the landowner that was out there with you guys in the site walk. So then but that could be amended to say, or the applicant buys correct, that but parcel. And the only thing I'd suggest at that point would that be that the plan not be approved until you get an updated survey and showing that that land has been included in this parcel. Because you have a building encroaching on another piece of property right and we now. Can't Oh boy, yeah. It was um, it was originally on the lot, and he had to move it to put building two in, which I didn't know he moved it out there. And then he's just been using his storage, and he will remove it. But he he plans on buying that land now. How soon? Um, um, he's on vacation right now. It, he said they they were reached a price, so I'm thinking it's, if he hasn't. So bought we it could already. use your certificate of occupancy option as a way to go forward tonight, so we don't have to keep this hanging around. Yep, so no, I would no monitor, CO yes. until, no CO, until, the, um, until the building is removed or, yeah. and, and continue that sentence, or the abutting land has been purchased and included as part of this parcel. Yeah, I know. If, if you, you don't do buy that, it, you remove it. Correct. I didn't tonight. see the building. What is it? Is it just like, is it just like a wooden shack out there? Yeah, it was an old building that was on the lot. I never went in it. I don't know it's what's on eight inch It's on uh, eight-inch concrete pilings. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a permanent structure yeah but he will remove it if he had to but he does plan on buying that land now and actually i'm supposed to be trying to figure out what to do with that land uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know i i'm we'll be reluctant to actually approve any plan that is encroaching on an abutting property until that's fixed right and that'll be in the yeah. you know. which piece which piece of property is going to buy is um where is this this whole back piece the Jack McCarthy yeah. property. The McCarthy property. Okay. I mean, can we legally approve a plan that that it's got a building on somebody else's property? No. Um, technically, you can't. So then, why why would we even discuss putting this in the? Well, I mean, I, I you just I was hoping, based on the earlier conversation, that this was going to be taken care of fairly, you know, quickly. And at the time, the option of purchasing that land was not something that I was aware of until tonight. Um, and I was trying to just say, look, no certificate of occupancy until for that, for five, until that building is gone. Which he has said he will get rid of it. If it needs to be gone, it'll be gone. Um, it's no big deal for him. And, it, and if you condition the approval on that, then he has no choice right. but to get rid of that building. Um, but if he's now, looking to purchase it and there's going to be additional land added to this then you probably are going to want to table this until because then you're going to have to come back again 
Correct. Regardless, and you're going to have to file application <coughs> fees all over again. Unless he just gets rid of the building. Right. Yeah. Okay. Why would you have to file an application fee? Uh, no, I don't think. No, because if we would approve it, you just need to have the additional land shown on the plan. So, but you would have to amendment. come back. If, if, if well, it's not a change in use. So. No. Okay. No, it's not. But I mean, I think a decision has to be made by the applicant. Um, I would also, you know, um, you might want to just table this at this point because. You'd also give him time to include the additional fencing on the plan, which is not on there. Which he um, kind of changed his mind on that one. Talking to a lot of people, he they said you shouldn't put a fence off your property line. You should put it next to your property line. So if he did so, he would be putting it through their shed and through their swing set in Mr. Pepin's backyard because he owns half his lawn. And he doesn't. Dave doesn't want to do that. He would just like to put some trees as a buffer because there's already a 50-foot buffer I, I move that we table this application until okay. the applicant can decide what he wants to do with all this. I'll second Niles. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? No discussion on a tabling. Well, we have to, we have to vote on it. Then the second, the, the motion, the seconder and the, mo and the motion Okay, procedure, Robert's rules. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second for tabling. Do you have something? I do have some information. The, uh, well, we already have a motion and a second, so we need to act on that. Well, we can discuss. There. Let them oh, rescind yeah. it. Is it going to change our mind? It's, just a it's uh, information that the board requested of me from our site block, which I have for you. Uh, right now, it stands in my mind as a violation that you should be looking at. Okay, we, let's act on tabling this right now, and then we can go back to that. Did you bring this up with, I think that the best thing, if it's a code issue, can you bring it up with, with Dustin? Well, it was a board request. Yeah, you guys requested him to do the filters, which he saw all the filters. And then you requested to put shades on the lights in turn one, which he's done. All the lights have the shades on them now, and they're all facing down. Um, just like any light in town, but his has the shades on it. Um, so I don't think there's any glare going towards in the butter or in the street. And of course, they're all it's pretty much wooded around it, except for you know maybe the house where the fence is going. And um, but Mr. Chairman, I feel I should respond to that. And sure. Use this information. And if you allow, I'll pass these out to the board. Okay. I'll let you see one first. The question we had was actually was the shading appropriate for the site? So in the nighttime, this is from the uh, zoning ordinance updated. This is the uh, purpose of the ordinance. It goes on to define what glare is within our ordinance. This first photo is uh, lights on the site, and the second photo would be. And that's what he's claiming is shaded. Yeah, the, the date for that, those photos? It was uh, last Wednesday. Did Dustin see these? He has not. No. You'd like me to give him one? I mean, we got what we're talking about the application. And and yeah. What you refer to as the shading, was that put in before or after last Wednesday? These installed, all the lights have the shade. It's, there's but one shade. Oh. But was it before or after last Wednesday? I believe it was before. Well, then we got a problem. Was it? They were all on there when you guys met, right? Did you go there after? We were there in the, in the sunlight. Was it before Wednesday? We went there and. The yes, it was before Wednesday. And all the things were shaded, right? The yeah. Well, <coughs> this is what he's calling shaded. Yeah. Well, I mean, the shades that go on the light. Before. You, the, sh the point of the. Sh I'm sorry. This is, they look like the same picture. You said this was last wind? Look at this right here. Mm -hmm. And this photo was taken from School Street? It was taken from the uh, entrance on School Street, yes. All right, so we have a, a motion and a second to table. I mean, this is a conversation. I, I, we have to act on the motion right now. 
because we, we shouldn't even be discussing anymore. So we have a motion in a second. All in favor of tabling the motion or tabling this application. Okay. Okay. Procedurally, I mean, to what we have to do. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, so you, you need to work out with Dan what is acceptable. Um, I think they've already went round and round on that one so far. Well, he's the code enforcement officer, so he's going to decide when the roulette wheel stops. So you need to work with him yep. to get his agreement that shading is appropriate, the lighting is appropriate. Yeah. And yep. we will meet again in three weeks if you can work it out by then. Yeah, I'm sure Mr. Springer and him will figure something out. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Dustin. Thank but he also needs to make a decision about building. Well, and also the about property and the, the building versus the, the trees and where it's going to be. And yeah. you know, so let him figure it all out and come back to us. Okay. Sean's microphone is really carrying. Did you notice yeah, that? It's like I got a reverb going on yeah, or something. Yeah, clearly you've it's got important great. things to tell us. I do, I, yeah. finally. <laughs> uh, and, the, and the universe <laughs> knew, which is why you got the good one. Next, in new business, expansion of conditional use application warehouse on Fort Coffin Lane, map R72, lot 9B. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Dion. Lee J? Yes. Good evening again. Um, the applicant uh, submitted a conditional use permit on May 10th. Um, the application is being heard under 9.8.B of the zoning ordinance as an expansion to a previous conditional use permit which is expanding by 1,200 square feet. The expansion is proposed to be used for additional warehouse space associated with the current warehouse operation. The property is located just off Portland Road and sits between Lowry's um, Lawn and Patio Furniture and Route 4 Outdoor and South Storage. The property is located in the RCI zone. The zone has a minimum side yard setback of 25 feet both of which have been met. The application, the application indicates there will be no additional employees or changes to traffic flow or change in use from what currently exists. The application also has several drawings shown, shown including renderings and footprint of the existing and proposed building addition. Under next steps, um, this is the first meeting of this application. The project is located in a highly commercialized area. The board needs to decide if a public hearing is, need, is needed for the application and if a site walk is required. If the board is comfortable with the application as proposed, then finding the application complete and approving the application as presented would be the alternate action to the above process mentioned. Simply because it's in a very highly commercialized area, there are no residential abutters around. And in fact, one of the one of the abutters is a is a um, um, self storage facility. So there's nobody there. Um, so it's really the board's call as to how you want to proceed. But everything else is in is complete with this application. Okay. Well, come on up. You have anything? You don't have to. <laughs> really say we oh, if you're going to talk, yeah, if you're going to talk yeah. for our viewers at home, and just state your name once again for the record. Cheryl Dion, Route Four, um, Four Coffin Lane. We're just looking to put. We do grain sales at that facility, and we're looking to add on to the building so that where we're located, we can be right beside where all the grain's stored, where we're actually having the sales. So rather than them stopping at the main office and then having to get back in the car and drive back down the building to where they pick it up, <coughs> it'll be a one-stop one shop. So they, there is a building already there, and you're just adding on to it? Correct. We're just adding 20 feet out on the building and going the length of the building. So and it's all attached. You, you're not expecting any substantial change in volume or operation or anything like that? Nope, just trying to it's make it easy. Convenience both convenience for your customers of how the flow of traffic goes. Correct. Do we want to do a site walk? I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think that a public hearing is necessary, but... Um, yeah. I mean, it sounds like there's not a... No, I... Yeah, about business. a site walk. Well, I, I'm very familiar with the site because I shop there. I, I've noticed that on the on the plan that they've written up, it's the addition is at the rear of the building, That's which there is nobody at all down there. Yeah, um, correct. And in fact, there's not really a lot of traffic that seems to be it's onesie twosie that go in and out. 
Um, will, I don't need will, to go. Will you feel visit. less grumpy if it's in the back so you don't have to travel a second time? <laughs> Anything would help me. Listen, yeah. if it makes you less grumpy, let's go forward. Never <laughs> seen this out of you. Okay, do we think that the application is complete? Yes, I, I would move it that we uh, find the application to be complete. And I would second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, so um, we could come back. So the application is complete. Um, you don't feel you need a public hearing on it, as I think someone stated, then you could actually act on this application tonight. Correct. And I don't see any conditions or anything that's required of it. This is, this is one of those applications that if I could change the process for you, it would be approval internal by staff. It wouldn't even come to you folks. And but that's another right. story <laughs> for another day. Proposing that as an amendment. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's for our next uh, land use ordinance change. change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to be voting on findings of facts or, or, or conditions of approval. We're just voting. Well, there on are no conditions right. proposed anyway. Um, did I? I did not draft draft findings of fact for this. No, I think. But I can those. Those can be drafted for next. Were there, we were there findings of facts on the original application? Do you know? I have not seen the original file. Yeah. I mean, she, even the line drawings are all there for the addition right. on the back of the buildings. Yep. And Do we want to act on this tonight without the findings of fact? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't Those will be easy for opinion. me to draft. Okay. I mean, these are so the nothing will say not applicable. Actually, so we won't <laughs> act on the findings of fact. We can we can always vote on the findings of fact. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. Um, I'll so have them then there's no, there's the no conditions of approval on this, so we're right. just voting for the applic we're so. just voting on approving the application. Yeah. All the setbacks are accurate That's and what, uh, they're showing seventy lot. feet from the side yard and it's twenty five feet in the ordinance, so they're plenty far away. I'm sure Dan will be out there with tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you wear out the old one? <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Metric or? Uh, you just decided. <laughs> I, I would move that we uh, approve the application as it is. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. That was easy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sometimes they are easy. And you had to wait for the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, very but it was exciting exactly though, wasn't it? You wanted. Yeah. It was exciting. A good life lesson. A little patience is always a beautiful thing. Oh. Uh, hey, James. Exactly. Were you and Jess saying that you would propose uh, making this just a uh, uh, something the planning office on its own would do? Or? Yeah, I would raise the bar. Um, the substantial expansion starts at 500 square feet, and I would uh, propose to raise that. I would not agree with that because... It's, I, we'll my personal later. feelings, it's better if you have six people or seven people or eight people looking at it so you don't miss even 500 square feet additional. I mean, this was an easy process because well, and, it's and, easy. And this one would come because unless my arithmetic is off, 20 by 60, 60. this is, yeah. is 1,200. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this would have come before us anyway. But there may be other issues also, Niall, besides just sheer size. It could I mean, be the butter. Well, it could but be. I, I think it needs at to this go point we'll have an opportunity size. to see what yeah. James comes up with. I, I mean, the, the concept that, that there should be some things that we don't need to do is fine. We can work out the details when they come mm -hmm. before. So this will be a good thing for James, the young aspiring uh, town planner. Well, it's, it's, it's Let's see what James comes up with. He's a master's candidate at the University yeah. of Southern Maine. Let's see what James that. comes up with. It's He's going to blow us away. This is going to be good. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, I feel confident now. I'm sure I'll be getting a phone call. On this. <laughs> <I know. laughs> hey, John Stoll, turn this can we have a, a beer tonight? Project. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Going to be on video date. All right. Yeah. So next on the agenda is any informational or any uh, informational items. Uh, I, Mr. Uh, Kahaya was in town the past two days. Hey. Um, yeah, there's some significant movement. Um, he met with. Uh, he showed up. That's significant that's, movement. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, he's, he was pretty transparent. I mean, he pretty much said in words, but we all knew that he has bigger fish to fry. Um, but. He, well, he, I'll tell you right now. I don't care about his bigger fish. I want this taken care of. Sure. Um, it yeah. may be a guppy, but it still needs to be fried. 
Well, I'm sure there's a reason that I was not invited to this meeting because if that's the way that it came off, then I would have had a few choice words for him because I'm, I don't want well, to no. hear about well, no, that, he's, th that I mean, this he is was, not a high priority yeah. for him. Yeah. Because yeah. it's he a high priority a for us. Deal, yeah. And I know that I'm on the record right now. I know that I'm on the record right now, but there was a sweetheart deal that a lot of these people in town have a, have a, a big heartache at the fact that we're still looking at an eyesore. Yep. So that, that's my informational items for this evening. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just end by saying that he met, he's met with a um, larger contractor who has the financial wherewithal to do that and that the meeting went really well. Um, so He's I still mean, thinking I, of selling the property to locals? I might suggest we ought to just wait until an application is submitted. Yeah. Well, I would say that we're losing ground on Dover and other places because there's a lot of building going on in Dover. I drive through Dover every day. There's higher end apartments going in. There is workforce housing going in, the old Foster's Daily Democrat building. Um, so we're losing ground every day. Summer's worth. Summersworth. Summersworth is going to be redoing a few. Well, isn't, it, isn't it the idea is that Dover becomes saturated, Portsmouth becomes saturated. Well, how long do we have it to comes wait? In and it comes in and it, there's an area where we're, we're next. I think this is a conversation like you and I were talking about that. I'll come have lunch once a month. I'm going to have lunch in, in the planning office once a month with James. <laughs> and that goes for really anybody Everyb that wants everybody, to come yeah. in for, for updates. There's, there's, there's more that. to I'm communicate. We, the the we, we can't go win yeah. three at a time. No, we can't. Yeah. So we'll take turns. We'll take this is this will be a good conversation to have. Bring a hot yeah. light yeah. in to put James under. All right. Chairman. Fried fish is for lunch, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> to discuss uh, what is it, 378? 398. 398. Uh, this was should, originally should we be talking uh, talking no, about Springer? You should not be talking about we can't it talk about him without the applicant here now. Yeah. This is a uh, enforcement issue. It Still. is an enforcement issue, Dan, and you should go out and take care of it. I'm going to disagree with that comment. Mm. <laughs> it was the planning board that's, that required the lighting, not the not the local zoning ordinance. Have a nice evening, gentlemen. Okay. I don't. I, I would agree that we probably shouldn't be talking about it right I now. I don't think that we should. That, could you? Could you do a, a could you do a, a memo to James? Yep. Yeah, I can do. In what? In reference to what? What you're going to say right now? Okay, I can do that. I just because the applicant's it's still an active application and he's not here. I understand. Um, but for me to carry on what the board has talked about this evening, I need some clarity on the planning board's position versus the zoning ordinance because the legal. Uh, for any any property you're talking about, let's just clarify that for anything. General rule but, is, but I think what Dan is saying your is job that is to it's a, the may be, it may be a land use Go issue, not zoning particular zoning. to this application. Okay. Then, then he can talk about it. Yeah. If the planning board has ordered this, not the zoning ordinance. It was a condition of approval under your board. I'm the enforcement officer, but am I enforcing the planning board's decision or am I enforcing the zoning ordinance decision? And the legal path after that could be substantially different on enforcement. I don't understand the difference. One is appealed to the uh, ZBA, and I think the other would be appealed to the selectmen. I think what he's saying is that that some condition that has been put forward might be greater than what's in the the, the land use or less than or it, it can be equal it was who, what I'm trying to explain is who required the enforcement or even the condition of approval was the planning board right well but but wait, wait, wait. what actually happens is we are here to rule on the zoning ordinance the land use ordinance correct our interpretation of it includes per some particular conditions. Correct. But what you are enforcing is the land use ordinance as interpreted by us. We, we can't go beyond the requirements of the land use ordinance. What we can do is say, in, in the context of this particular application, this is how it's going to work. So what you're doing and what we're doing is simply interpreting the land use ordinance. So. 
we, we can't create a, a condition that is not based in the land use ordinance. I understand. If that answers your question. It partially does. Good. Partially is way better than I usually do, so I'm thrilled. <laughs> but it doesn't clarify for what position that I'm enforcing this for. If it's a planning board condition of approval, it could be different than what's in the land use ordinance. And in this particular case, uh, Mr. S uh, the applicant could be in disagreement with the uh, influence that the planning board had in their conditions of approval compared to the land use ordinance itself. If somebody is not, as a general, this is hypothetical. Sounds like that goes as to the selectmen. As, as a general matter, if somebody isn't happy with an action of the planning board, there is legal recourse for them to do. Exa I agree with you. So now, until and unless that legal recourse is pursued, what you're doing is is enforcing the land use ordinance and the guidance that we have given you is how we believe it applies in any given situation. I agree with Hypothetically, you. Hypothetically, in general. I agree so with that's you. where we are. Okay. We, we can never do anything that it does not have a solid foundation right. Um, Thanks and for gives us it authority down. under the land use ordinance. We can't add to it. We can interpret how it applies in a situation. And, if and that's the most we can tell you because we can't go into any details about any particular application without the other applicant being here. But I hope you at least got a partial answer to your question. And if there's disagreement from an applicant about the way that we would be interpreting the land use ordinance, they can come and talk to us about it because we're reasonable people. And if yeah. they still disagree with us, then they can go well, to the select them. Silly some of them. I would never four points up with such a thing. If I issue to anybody in this community a uh, violation that is noted by the uh, planning board, then the appeals board is the selectman. If I enforce a land use ordinance in a violation, the appeal goes to the ZBA. Correct. You're, you're, Who you're, am forcing, I work you're forcing a, a land use ordinance. It's not a, it's not a, it's not, it's not, yeah, a land use ordinance. Okay. Thank you. As a general matter, because that's all we're talking about, general matters. Nothing in particular. General, general matters. Exactly. Land general. use ordinance is what we're all doing here. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next on the agenda is the adjournment. I think we should probably get out of here before we get in <laughs> any more trouble. Yeah. I move that we adjourn. A second. Further discussion? All in favor?